<laughs> and there we are. Thank you for waiting, everyone. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> um, I guess I owe folks an apology because I know this time last week we put together a uh, turkey. And unfortunately, that turkey video is not done yet still, I'm afraid. <laughs> I did show a preview of uh, when the turkey came out of the oven. But, well, turned out to be a uh, very interesting weekend. If anybody had on my Facebook knows. Um, unfortunately, some events did cause some delays with the, with the turkey video, including um, worrying about um, these two uh, guys here. Well, here's one of them. This one here is Trouble, who lives up to his name, that's for sure. But <laughs> he and uh, his sister spent uh, most of the weekend, well, being quite sick, unfortunately. They were not eating and they were throwing up regularly for most of the weekend. So yeah, we were really concerned about them. We were about ready to uh, get them to the vet on Monday morning, but fortunately they recovered by then and have spent the last couple of days um, just uh, well doing much better. Today, in fact, they are pretty much back to normal. Uh, they're running around, causing trouble, uh, you know, getting into everything and eating again the way they're supposed to be. So they are uh, doing much better. <laughs> if you'll give me one more second, please. I just want to uh, bring him back to his mom. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. And now at last, <laughs> hi there everyone, and welcome again to Cast Iron Wednesday. <laughs> um, as you know, Thanksgiving is one week from tomorrow, so uh, everybody's uh, doing the prep work. And last week we did a turkey, so I figured tonight we would do uh, the other must-have dish that goes with just about any uh, American Thanksgiving dinner, and of course that would be pumpkin pie. And I really wanted to show you uh, one easy trick I learned quite a long time ago about how to uh, prepare your pumpkin. Uh, because, as you know, preparing a pumpkin is one of those things that everybody hates because you've got to take the pumpkin, you've got to break the stupid thing open, rip out the guts, uh, you make a mess all over the place, you, um, you, you risk losing your limbs when you uh, try to cut the, that tough thing up. But in fact, there is a much easier way to prepare your raw pumpkin for a pumpkin pie. And uh, let me show you what that is because I already did it an hour ago. Ooh, I forgot something. I forgot my glove. And that is quite simply, you just take the whole pumpkin. Put the pumpkin in a cast iron pan and just roast the whole thing in the oven for about one hour at 350 degrees. As you can see, I didn't cut it open or put slits in it or anything. I just put it in the pan and put it in the oven and roasted it for one hour. Let me put this down safely. In fact, this time there are two of them. And here's the other. This one here is uh, in my number seven uh, BSR skillet, whereas that one is in a BSR number five. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was a fun thing in itself because especially this year, as I'm sure you noticed, there's somehow we have suddenly got into a pumpkin shortage. I went out looking for pumpkins for uh, this pie here and could not find them until finally tonight. I mean. I mean, you know, normally you can uh, trip over pumpkins when you go into the uh, supermarket, but I went out to Price Chopper. They had none. I went out to Wally World. They had none. <laughs> I went to Price Right. They had none. I finally went to Stop and Shop, and they had these tiny things. Well, tiny compared to most of the pumpkins that you see. So, um, yeah, I, and they were going to initially charge $4.99 each for each of those things, but I managed to negotiate on that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, this has been an interesting year, all right, not the least of which is for pumpkins. 
But fortunately, well, we've got our pumpkins here, and I guess that's a couple. Um, while these things are cooling off, let me, uh, I guess, a couple of other things to say as well, and that is that number one, if you cannot find yourself a fresh pumpkin, there is nothing wrong with using canned pumpkins. Um, I know it's not as good as what as with buying it fresh. True, but. Yeah, I mean, when you still make this with your own uh, ingredients, when you make a pie from scratch, it will still give you a terrific pie, and nobody will uh, complain at all if you have to use uh, one of these things. And the nice thing is you only really need one can of this stuff. I mean, it goes a long way, and it makes yourself a really nice and uh, easy pie. The other is, is that if you really do want to make a uh, pie from scratch and do not want to use the canned stuff, then there is nothing wrong, really with using a substitute. Um, this is just your old uh, typical butternut squash, which they still have plenty of, interestingly enough. For some reason, they have plenty of squash, yet they don't have any pumpkins, which seems odd. I don't know, maybe pumpkins are more seasonal or something. But um, there's nothing wrong with making a squash pie. You can just take pretty much the same recipe and substitute squash for the uh, pumpkin, and uh, you should have a uh, delicious pie again that nobody will complain about. <laughs> so uh, despite everything that's happened this year, you can still have yourself a pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving. So anyway, let's see what uh, let's see what we got here so far. Um, hello from Michigan, Andrew Bonificio and Clay Gennard from Maine. Well, thank you for showing up as always. <laughs> um, Jessica T, I followed your pumpkin pie recipe. Well, thank well, thank you very much. And that's one reason why I wanted to do do this tonight. You know that video is like about seven, eight years old. And yeah, the lighting in those videos were terrible in those days, I admit. Yes, I hope I've improved a little bit. But especially because it's been so long, I mean, I see no reason why we can't just put another uh, pie together tonight. And uh, we'll just have an update. Although the recipe is essentially the same because I love the recipe. I've made it a number of times over the years, and it still uh, comes out just fine, I think. So... <laughs> Um, and incredible. The cast iron can do anything. Well, that's my feeling entirely. I guess that's why one reason why I got into this kind of hobby. Uh, sorry, Trouble and Miss May were sick. Glad they're doing okay. Glad they're doing better. <laughs> they look like some groovy, cool kitties. I'm <laughs> gonna have to try this one. Oh, yeah, no, we have really fallen for those kitties, or no, or as my roommate would say, uh, they have us and they have me wrapped around their finger or paw. <laughs> but that's how it is when you own or are owned by cats. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, the, another nice thing, of course, is that uh, pumpkin pie really is not that difficult to prepare. I mean, it's really, really, uh, even, especially if you're not even using the homemade stuff, then it is really that it's there's really nothing to it. It's only a matter of putting the uh, pie filling together or even doing a uh, crust as well. So I am um, I figure there's enough time for me to go all the way, if I don't talk too much, that is. <laughs> and uh, let's see if we can uh, get a pie in, into the oven before this video is over. So that means while we're doing this, let me move a couple of other things around. Recipe calls for softened butter, so now I get to play with another toy. Um, some, some folks may recognize this one. This is a, uh, Griswold square egg skillet. It's actually from the 1960s and it's more like a Griswold Wagner when they were both owned by the same company. So, uh, this particular one here is another one that I inherited from mom because this was, um, well, sort of, um, my grandmother uh, had this had a uh, square egg pan like this, and she would often make um, square eggs for us as we were growing up. Um, then, uh, as it turned out, mo all of her cast iron went to uh, my cousin, so I got this. I managed to find this for my mom as a um, as a memento. And so when she uh, passed on this year, it uh, came back to me, and now I'm glad to be able to use it just to soften some butter because that's one thing we're doing here, about half a st stick of uh, softened butter. And that's one thing I don't have here, a butter knife. So I've been softening this already, so it's 
pretty soft as it is. And now that we've done that, let me just stick this onto the very, very low heat right now. Now, uh, how big of a pumpkin or pumpkins for the recipe? Oh, yeah, that's another thing. You don't need a huge pumpkin. Um, I've got probably got more than enough here to make uh, two pies, in fact. Uh, a pie of a, a pumpkin of about this size, this is, I don't know, maybe two to three pounds or so. Uh, this would easily make a nine inch pie and possibly even a 10 or even a 12 inch pie. You really don't need a lot. This makes a lot of pumpkin puree. So it's, I mean, so it's really nothing, nothing to it. Um, let me move. Uh, I've got my ingredients for the stuff together. What I don't have, there we are. Let me show you one other thing. Actually, let's get a little closer here now. Now that we've done this much, let's rearrange our shots. Because, of course, you know, we have, um, it's like a drinking game. You have to do shots here. And da -da -da -da. thank you for your patience, as I always say. There we go. So that way you can see the cast iron, too. And I'm not too much in the way. Anyway, um, that's another nice thing about simply roasting this in the oven. Oh, yeah, one last thing. Let's get ourselves a knife. This one should do. Nice and sharp. Um, that's another thing is that, as I mentioned, I simply roast the whole pumpkin in the oven, and that saves us a lot of time because... As you can see, uh, getting the puree out of this pumpkin is not going to be difficult at all. In fact, all we really need to do, don't burn ourselves, and we cut it up. It slides through nice and easy. And so look at that. We're not uh, getting pumpkin guts all over the place. We are not pounding this uh, thing with a, with a hammer. This is how easy it is to get the puree from the pumpkin after we have roasted it. There's really nothing to it. Um, did forget one thing, especially since, ow, since this is hot, this will have to happen. And once we've done that, we get ourselves a fork as well. All right. Anyway, really nothing to it, as you can see. I just slice it up a little bit. Um, I guess one other thing I should say, when I first put this recipe together several years ago, you, know, you see, pumpkin, as you probably know, is a squash, and it is completely edible. Uh, yeah, we know about the, the roasted pumpkin seeds, of course, but the skin itself is also edible, and I like eating the pumpkin skin. Uh, when I initially put this... Um, when I initially put this recipe together, I simply ground up the... Oh, what was that? I simply ground up the entire um, pumpkin, uh, pumpkin, namely the uh, pumpkin meat and the um, and the skin as well. And I simply God, this is not coming out. And I simply mixed it all together into the uh, pump into the uh, pumpkin filling. And I thought it tasted terrific, but people were freaked out because they kept finding little tiny pieces of skin in their pumpkin pie. They thought I was I was using little tiny pieces of cut or shredded carrots because it seemed to have the same consistency. And uh, because they thought it was carrots, they thought it had the same taste. I personally thought it was delicious and I, I would very much indeed make this uh, with um, by grinding up the entire thing, including the skin. But because so many people um, objected to it, I had to do it the hard way. And so now I just simply take the puree and, uh, remo and remove the skin. 
but that's still not too difficult. And by the way, notice as well, even though it, it's still taking me longer than I would have liked, as you can see, this is really not hard at all when it comes to um, removing the pumpkin heads, is it? So now that we've done that, if just trying to get rid of these extra seeds here. Anyway, from here, the skin comes right off. So really, see how easy that is? Boy, this sure is a lot easier than whacking it with a cleaver or a knife and almost cutting your hand off, isn't it? There we go. No problem at all. Oh, yeah. And one more thing I think I will demonstrate as well. I'm not kidding when I say you can eat the skin here. Mm. Because, again, pumpkin is just a squash. There is nothing wrong with eating the skin. Mm. Roasted flavor isn't bad at all either. So look at that. Just like that, we've got ourselves some freshly roasted... Pumpkin puree. And maybe if I could just get the rest of these tiny little seeds out of here, this would probably make more than enough because this recipe calls for about uh, one and a half cups of pumpkin puree. So that means we get, and just in case it's not enough, that's why I did the uh, second pumpkin. But yeah, I'm going to save that skin and, put, and eat it myself. I mean, all you have to do is, you know, put on some butter, maybe some uh, salt, pepper, and garlic. And uh, this is not bad at all. Mm. Definitely not complaining here. Let's see if we have any other comments so far. Ah, uh, how big of a pumpkin said that. Is it a sugar pie pumpkin? Yes, these are pie pumpkins. I did manage to find pie pumpkins at the store. But in fact, you can roast a uh, big jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. There is nothing wrong with doing that. Um, I don't even think the uh, taste is really that much different. I mean, if you really think that there's a difference, you may just need to add a little bit more sugar. But I have used uh, jack-o'-lantern pumpkins in uh, cooking as well. And besides, that's really a great bargain because you get a lot of food to eat out of that one pumpkin. <laughs> Way easier when it's cooler. Yes, it is. Um, take the scratch to a whole new level. Well, <laughs> um, I don't care if he's done it before. I hope we get a full fruit cake and figgy pudding recipe repeat at Christmas. Well, that's one thing I want to do uh, on one of these live uh, YouTube videos here. Uh, within the next couple of weeks or so after Thanksgiving, I do want to do a figgy pudding, especially because, you know, I, as I've said enough times before, it's that that running joke goes, what the heck is figgy pudding? And I would love to show people what the heck figgy pudding is because it is delicious. It is fantastic. It is it has become one of my favorite um, Christmas dishes. And I love making and serving figgy pudding, especially to people who have never had it before. So... We will just throw this in here. Get it all over the place while we're at it. <laughs> no, seriously, I am making a mess here. <laughs> I'm thinking I may have to do the extra pumpkin. Oh dear, I'm getting a little bit of the uh, skin in here. What a shame. As I mentioned already, I love the skin. But hopefully I am getting this all over the place. Nuts. Watch it, Dan. Watch it. All right. Da -da 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 and I don't want to get that seed in there. I know. Roasted pumpkin seeds. Well, this isn't going to be roasted, unfortunately. It's just going to be baked. And I'm sure a lot of us will be baked soon enough, but I'm not so sure this is going to make quite enough. 
I think I will have to do the second pumpkin. Plop. <laughs> and the uh, stem comes out with no difficulty at all. So, yeah, if you are preparing a pumpkin for, you know, pumpkin pie or for whatever, I mean, as you can see, I highly, highly recommend this method. It is so much easier, much less risky. It is a piece of cake or pie, uh, easy as pie, I guess you could say. Hmm. Although, admittedly, it is still kind of hot. I will agree with uh, what he said there. It's much easier when it's cooler. Hmm. On the other hand, after it's cooled off, it may toughen, toughen a little bit. So, doing this, this will help it cool as well. But nonetheless, I'm hoping for at least some folks, this ends that nightmare of having to ch cut open a uh, pumpkin and put your life at risk as you try to chop, the, chop it into uh, little pieces. There's really nothing to it this way. In fact, why even use the knife when I can just use a fork? And we open that up. We get that bowl back. What I need is just a second fork. But anyway, thank you for your patience, as I say again and again, while I just quickly get these things out of the way. But nonetheless, it sure is easier doing it this way than having to scrape them out with uh, some kind of a uh, scraper, isn't it? There we go. That was a good one. Oh, and while we're doing this, I've got to heat the oven up, meanwhile, to 450, because there's the uh, recipe also has a way of uh, making a uh, pie crust, especially for a pumpkin pie. That's one other thing. I mean, yes, you can certainly use store-bought pie crusts, and I know I say this a lot. There's nothing wrong with using the store-bought stuff. Homemade is better, especially since you realize that there are actually different kinds of crusts for different kinds of pies. And yet all of those recipes just say, use a store-bought crust. You know, they don't, it's just a generic crust. They don't have store-bought pumpkin pie crust or store-bought um, pecan pie crust or apple pie crust. It's just store-bought pie crust. <laughs> Hi. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, that may not be a bad idea. Jamie is uh, handing me the ice cream scoop and saying, why not try this dummy? No, no not the dummy part, but mm -hmm. try it. What a concept. Thank yeah. you very much. Use a spoon on the just to hold it. You know, our tongs. Use tongs. Mm-hmm. Use tongs to hold it. There. There. Yes. Use tongs to hold it because it's hot. Yes, it is. And then scoop it with the ice cream scoop. Thank you very much. Like, hold it on the outside edge. No, no, right. I'm saying use the scoop to scoop Putting it out. That would work. Okay. What? Can I show you real quick? Like but this? What I'm talking about? Like this? Yeah. Well, I can't see what you're doing. Like, yeah, just to hold it so it stays steady. Like that. It's almost there. Mm hmm Whatever works. <laughs> I know. I was trying to show you what I was going to do. Like, oh, yeah. Just, it'll keep it steady and hold it in place. Yes, but uh, thank you very much for the suggestion, and I think it did help. Yeah, because it just gets the rest of these stringy bits out. And thank you for about the tenth time. Thank everybody else for their patience. Thank you for your patience. We're almost done here. And this is probably the hard part. After this, all we have to do is uh, put together a crust. That's my hope. How exciting. We're spending Wednesday night watching this guy scoop out a pumpkin, actually. Yeah, everything you make is awesome. Uh, no, no. I, I seriously doubt that. Okay, but 
Now, finally, we are just about done. Where are the extra bits? The best I could say is yes, it is still easier than doing than scooping out a raw pumpkin. And having done that, now the next part. Let's stuff a little bit more. And in fact, this is probably more than enough now to fit into this thing. So we actually have more than enough. Cool. Dun, 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 dun. Solid enough. I wonder if I may have to put a little bit of liquid in this thing. This is going to be fun. I think we're going to see. You're, you may watch me break this ninja food processor here on cam. That's going to be an interesting sight, isn't it? And right about here. Okay. That's where we will do it. Ah, not in the cam. Not in the way of the mic. Here we are. Before I do this, I should probably check those comments one last time. For starters, where did the front of this thing go? Somehow I seem to have lost my bearings here. Oh, no wonder. That's... I, Duh. I always get flustered when I'm on camera. There, at last. Now, for the fun part. <laughs> Looks like a couple of seeds I'm going to have to get out to. But nonetheless... Turned out that really wasn't so hard. Because now we've got some pumpkin puree. Hmm. And from here, let's see, make uh, good advice, whoever that was. You need a bigger food processor, bro. <laughs> probably. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> However, now I can move a lot of this stuff out of the way. And as this is cooling off, put this in the sink, move this out of the way. Don't want to mess up your workspace. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, that's all right. Cat just got back in the kitchen. Don't worry, don't worry. Hey, anyway, that is step one. <laughs> uh, but as I said, at least I didn't injure myself doing this. So now, while this is cooling down and the oven is heating up, this butter, meanwhile, has completely melted. My bad. I'll deal with that. Now for step two, let's prepare ourselves a pie crust. All right, we've got flour. We need uh, one tablespoon of baking powder. I promise putting these ingredients together will not take forever. One tablespoon of baking powder. Teaspoon of table salt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, here we go. And I will be whisking all these together after we get the dry ingredients. Which means I should probably do it right now, in fact. 
I found out only re not too long ago, whisking the dry ingredients is a crucial step because it helps to incorporate air into, and really into your batter here. This um, really does make a difference and it helps your pie or your cake or anything like that. It uh, helps it to hold together and rise much better. It's almost like a leavener. Well, yeah, I know. That's exactly what baking powder is. <laughs> so do not forget to whisk your dry ingredients. And having done that, we go on now. Oh, good. I can get this out of the way, too. Okay. And here is the uh, BSR. Oh, this was... This one for the pumpkin here was a BSR number five, um, Red Mountain. Love these things. They are so durable and so useful in the kitchen. The other one, as I said, was a BSR number seven. All right, now, get the mic out of the way again. Da, 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 da. We've got that much. Next in line, it's just a matter of throwing the other ingredients in, such as third cup of brown sugar, plop. Two tablespoons of shortening, plop. And half a stick of butter or margarine, softened. Well, I guess we're going to have to deal with melted. And, uh, oh yeah, one last thing. That would be a cup of boiling water. However, we mix all of these ingredients together first before we add some boiling water to it. I know, this is a little different from uh, a lot of pie crust recipes. This is an interesting one I found. In fact, it's actually based on a Bisquick um, recipe for a uh, crumbly uh, pie crust. Uh, the big difference is that we are using the basic ingredients that make up Bisquick as well. So it's kind of like, you know, everything from scratch. You know, from scratch Bisquick to make a from scratch pie crust. And once this is mixed in, it should not take much longer. Meanwhile, the last thing I'll need will be just a little bit of boiling water to make all of this into a dough. Right now, though, going as quickly as I can, as you can see, and this only proves that I am but an amateur because I know there are folks who can mix their ingredients together much faster than I can. Big difference is I'm trying to do this without making too much of a mess. <laughs> However, from here, let's get ourselves a little bit of water and we'll do it this way. We'll, we will nuke it. And we're only calling for about a third of a cup. So that was easy. Let me quickly throw this in the nuker. And while that is going, let me check these. Let's see here. I don't trust anyone who doesn't like pumpkin pie or cheese. It's unacceptable to dislike both. <laughs> That's Courtney remarks. <laughs> nice Corningware bowl. My mom had one just like it. Oh, yeah. These interesting things is uh, my original two Pyrex dishes were uh, I shouldn't say stolen, but more like acquired from my, uh, from my ex <laughs> about 10 years ago. <laughs> and I'm not getting into that anymore. Jo uh, Joseph Ortiz, just out of curiosity, does brand matter when it comes to baking soda, powder, flour, etc.? I have not really seen that much of any kind of a difference when it comes to things like this. I mean, baking soda and baking powder are very simple and basic chemicals. And while I know that there is a difference be in, between the store brand and the uh, regular brand when it comes to things like cocoa powder and a whole bunch of other stuff, 
as I said, baking soda and baking powder are so basic. I really can't see any way that they would have modified it just for the store brand. I would say no to that for that reason. There are some brand, some things that, yes, you definitely need the uh, brand name if you really want to go good. Again, like with cocoa powder, but not with um, baking powder or baking soda. And uh, I like using King Arthur flour. I use Clabber Girl. Oh, you mean, you mean this stuff? <laughs> No, they don't pay me those for those product plugs either. <laughs> it's hot enough to cook the pie on the sidewalk outside. Boy, I'd like to be where you are, Jucifer. <laughs> That's for sure. We are just getting into uh, freezing weather here in New England, unfortunately. Well, there we go. And we just mix in about this much boiling water. And do this as quickly as I can while it's still hot. Move this knife out of the way. Because now that we've done that, it's almost time to get in with our hands and really knead the dough. Because we need to knead the dough. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Okay, I just lost some subscribers to my channel with that joke. All right, let's see. But I think we are at the right consistency now to go ahead and start doing it the hard way or the easy way, whichever you prefer. And again, that was only about a third of a cup, mind you, of uh, boiling water. And it looks like it is starting, indeed, to firm up. So we are not doing too bad at all. There we go. Again, this is going to be a flaky crust anyway. So that's one reason why we do it this way, so that it does look kind of shaggy, yes. But... It should be enough to hold together once we mix it enough. There are some kinds of crusts you don't want to mix too much. This one, I don't think we have that kind of a problem because it's not like one of those flaky, buttery crusts. This is more like a crumbly crust. And seeing as how doesn't seem to be coming together yet, unfortunately. I might actually have to get a little bit more water. Let me double check that. You know, these things never seem to come out the same way twice, and I've fully admitted many times to being an amateur at this anyway. So, uh, hot enough? No, that's the same comment. All right, let's see here. What do we got? What am I missing at this point? We have, oh, one thing I should do is this. There we go, that'll help. Uh, the dough will be light brown because of the butter and shortening when you press it into the pan. Okay, mix it, add water, stir vigorously until soft dough forms. Okay, so we are not done yet. I am thinking maybe just a wee bit more water. That might be all I need. And of course, this faucet gets hot enough probably don't even need to nuke it again. And all I need is a little bit because this is actually, um, it's got a nice consistency to it already. It's almost at a uh, dough stage right now, so this should not take long at all. I'm thinking no more than just a little dash more of water.
because it looks like even that little bit has a uh, huge effect on this because now just that tiny little bit and it is coming together into a dough. So now we are definitely getting somewhere. Boom. So on the whole, I probably didn't use more than half a cup of water. And this is a nice consistency right here. In fact, I think before I finish it, I think we will move on to the next step, which means it's time once again ta -da, to bring out the cast iron, specifically one of my babies. A Griswold number 10 skillet, no less. Yeah, that's another thing about this recipe. It doesn't just give you a nine inch pie. It can give you a 12 inch pie or 11 and a half inch as far as Griswold is concerned, which means that one thing I did forget. And that would be just a little bit more shortening to uh, grease the pan, but I only need a little bit. This does not take long at all. Yeah, the Griswold is a large logo Griswold. Uh, and I've got dirt and grit and stuff on the bottom, but still it's a large logo Griswold. Anywhere from the 1920s to 1930s or arguably 1940s, but more likely 20s to 30s. So this, as they say, is a lot of people say this is like the king of uh, cast iron pans. I don't know about king, but it's definitely royalty. I'll say that much. This one here was also one of my many life lessons because when early on when I started getting into cast iron and it's like, oh, I want that, I want that, I want that. I got this burning, burning urge to uh, own a Griswold. And so I did the, the easy way and the dumb way, which is I went onto eBay and looked around and paid a high price for this uh, pan, which I did end up receiving. And as you can see, it is at least I got what I uh, asked for. However, only a couple of weeks after I acquired this pan from eBay, I went to the Brimfield Antique Show for the very first time, found this exact same pan, large logo Griswold number 10, for half the price that I paid for it on eBay. <laughs> so that was definitely my life lesson, <laughs> namely that eBay sucks. <laughs> Since then, I have learned to be much more careful when it comes to um, looking for looking uh, for cast iron on eBay. Maybe just a tad more, no more than that, so that this will be a nice soft dough, and then into the pan it goes. And not bad at all, I guess, for a from scratch imitation. Um, Bisquick pie dough. And I'll say again, that's, again, this is based on the ingredients for making homemade Bisquick, which in turn is used for making a homemade uh, Bisquick pie crust. And then it's just a matter of uh, shaping it all out. So, as, as long since we've got a nice cast iron pan in the picture here, I'm hoping folks won't mind that I'm taking the time to do this. Meanwhile, what year did you make your first pumpkin pie? I think it was like about 2011, 2012. It wasn't too long. It might have even been 2000. Yeah, 2011 sounds like about right because it would have been my first Halloween after I learned how to cook. As I had mentioned sometime, sometimes, um, this is kind of like my cat cast iron anniversary and that it was definitely in the year 2010 that I uh, got that I caught the cooking bug so everything in 2011 would have been my first time uh, really my first time cooking as well as my first time cooking it in cast iron so that would have been my first Halloween and so I almost certainly then would have uh, started 
a uh, pumpkin pie recipe for the first time in uh, 2011. And wow, it, I, it's hard to believe it's been nine years. <laughs> I've already had it. It's what happens when you work around it and put others before yourself. What? Oh, hmm. Uh, I've never, I've never made a pumpkin pie from scratch. Um, as you can see, it's a bit of a project. It is time consuming. I mean, it is taking this long, but it is well worth it. I mean, yes, you can buy a nice pumpkin pie for as little as $5 or so at places like Price Chopper, or even if you like, um, uh, you know, even if you like things like Table Talk, and Table Talk pies are nice, but... If you take the effort, the time to make it for, from scratch, then it really becomes something to be proud of. As you can see, it's really not that hard. That's one of the secrets I learned for most things. Cooking is actually not that hard. Yes, there are some incredible cooking projects that I'm probably never going to be able to accomplish. But on the whole, most recipes are easy. That's one reason why they're so popular, because they're easy. It's really not that hard to make a pumpkin pie, if anything. By doing it the crust from scratch, I'm really doing it the hard way, because yes, as I said, you can use a store-bought pie crust. No one will complain if you use it. Uh, on the other hand, if you make a crust from scratch, then you will really get a lot of praise. And by the way, another thing though is that this pie crust is actually going to shrink as it bakes. And it's only gonna bake for about 10 minutes, but it will actually shrink. It is not gonna be this high. It's only gonna be like maybe, yeah, uh, well, a lot lower, maybe about halfway up the side of this, of this pan if I'm lucky, which will be more than enough. I mean, a pumpkin pie does not rise very much. Also, the other nice thing is, especially with all the baking powder in it, is that it will also expand. So even though it looks like there are a lot of gaps here in the bottom, they will be filled up when the uh, dough expands. So this will still work just fine for a pumpkin pie. It's not like it is going to leak. So I will reassure you of that. Of course, on the other, other hand, uh, I have not tried serving this outside the pan. I will be, I will be honest about that. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. So I guess pumpkin pie is just too fragile to be served outside the pan then. Okay. All right. When, yeah, then we'll go, then we'll go with that, which means again, this will, uh, this will expand and we are now just about ready for our from scratch crust to go into the oven at 450 degrees. And it's only going to have to bake in that oven for about 10 minutes. You know, so there's no difficulty at all with that. By now, hopefully that pumpkin puree has uh, cooled off some as well, I hope. All right, let me just, because I'm trying to be... OCD here, <laughs> trying to fill in as many of these gaps as I can, even though, as I said, uh, well, the main reason is, again, this pie is going, this pie crust is going to shrink. Also, my camera stand is right in front of the oven, so I'm going to have to take everybody on a roller coaster ride again while I open the oven door. But that's what we get doing this on a low budget. <laughs> Let me move this camera stand over. There we go. And now at last, um, again, into the oven. And it will only take about 10 minutes. This is at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Bam. It is 9.21 p.m. Oh, that late already. Huh. And then from there, uh, yeah, that's good. All right, so far so good. Please say, tell me, tell me about it. Yes, I wonder if that's why they call it shoe fly pie. Shoe fly don't bother me. Yeah, please say happy birthday, Jeff. 
Happy birthday, Jeff. Congratulations. You made it through another year, especially here in 2020. That's an accomplishment. <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> so now that we've done that, we get to go to the next step, which again is the pie filling, which means we get to break out the brand, the style or design of this is what they call Am Amish butter prints because of these cute little uh, figures on it here. I'm not an expert. There are a lot of people who could probably name, you know, could probably date this to the year and say a lot of things, you know, kind of like I can do with vintage cast iron. But all I know is it is a really nice uh, vintage, uh, vintage uh, bowl. And I'm really glad to use it. So now, da -da, once this comes out of the oven, we'll just have to lower the temperature slightly. So, however, now we get to uh, do some fun stuff. In a large bowl, beat the eggs. And notice, by the way, this is something I learned from Alton Brown, which is you don't uh, crack your eggs on the side of the bowl. In fact, it looks like I got a little bit of shell in this. I was about to say, if you crack your eggs on the side of the bowl, you end up get you end up putting driving little pieces of shell into it and that makes it that much harder to remove now as it is i've got to deal with the old problem however here's where fingers help <laughs> because lo and behold unfortunately i wash my hands anyway so there that takes care of that that's one let me move the mic back so you can hear that a little better as always, for your patience with this. That's one. Two. It's a little better. I don't know how to get rid of this mess. Three. And four. There we go. What I like to do is I crack my eggs and actually turn it over and try separating the eggs with the crack on the top instead of on the bottom. Or separating the shells, I mean, not separating the eggs. I'm hoping that I've never known if that's the best way to crack an egg, but well, what can I say? It works well enough for me that it's a method that uh, I prefer. And now, eat the eggs. in the pumpkin and we have to be exact actually with the amount of pumpkin puree there are some things as i found out if i use too much pumpkin puree it's not going to set right so i actually have to take this stuff and use a measuring cup like one and a half cups of pumpkin puree which is almost exactly the amount you get from a um from one 15 ounce can of uh, pump, a canned pumpkin. How convenient. Hmm. Nonetheless, this is, I think we let's see, that's a quarter of a cup. Okay, have to do it this way. One. Da -da -da. Let's get these things out of the way. There we go. Blades, so I don't hurt myself. One. Two. Come on. It will 
may be a little more sturdy than the canned stuff, too. I'm hoping that will help it to settle. Three. We're halfway there. Four. Five. I mean, you know, some things like the sugar, for instance, you don't have to be as exact. But as I said, this is an important part of the uh, base or consistency of the pie. That's why I'm measuring it. And I, oh dear. Was that six? Did I goof? Um, let me see. Is, is anyone experiencing audio problems? Uh, can anybody hear me? Test, test, test. Is, is everything okay? Is my um, have have I lost my um, have I lost my audio or has it uh, locked up? Uh, audio problems. Yes. Okay. Let's check here. Oh, I think. Uh, one second. Let's let me do one thing. Stick that in. You can hear me. Okay, good. All right. Did the picture lock up or are we good? Coming through five by five here. Okay, good in Miami. Okay, that all sounds good. I kind of lost track. I'm actually not sure if I'm at five or six of those. <laughs> My bad. From the amount I have here, I'm thinking I'm at six. So we will have to go from there. I'm sorry? I, I can't hear you. Say that again. Yeah, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the comments. I actually lost track. What did I do? Oh, yes, six. Okay, somebody confirms it. Yes, it was six scoops of pumpkin. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. Thank you. That's as she just said, that's a good thing about doing it live. All right. In that case, then we are on our way. So once again. We're actually past the uh, hard part, you know, and by the way, I think we are just about ready as well with that uh, pie crust. Certainly, it would have been 10 minutes by now. So, let me move this out of the way. Get this mic out of the way again. And... Thank you. And this looks pretty good. <clears throat> Look at this. See, it did expand. Oops, let me try that out again. Look at this. See, it did expand. This is our pie crust. Now we bring the oven temperature down somewhat to about 425, because this is one of those recipes where you start at a high temperature and then work your way down to low. Having done that, now, at last, we can get back to what we were doing here. Okay, and now that we've gotten past the hard part, the rest of it will be much easier. Now we just throw in the rest, including one and a half cups of sugar. One, two, three. Unlike the pumpkin puree, we don't have to be quite as exact with that. Let's supply, okay, half a teaspoon of salt. There it is. You know, I've heard some people argue over whether or not this little bit of putting a tiny, tiny trace amount of salt in, in your uh, ingredients really helps and a lot some people say yes some people say no apparently it does add just that little bit of um tartness i guess that was two quarter uh teaspoons by the way so that's half a teaspoon all right now we get into two teaspoons of ground simonin in fact i'm getting low on this Especially with the holidays coming, it's definitely time to go out looking for more cinnamon or cinnamon. Yes, I know I could get cinnamon sticks and grind them myself in the pure in the uh, processor, which may not be a bad idea. 
So that's one. And two. And here again, as I said, I don't have to be quite as exact. Then we go in for a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. At least I was smart enough to get these ingredients out in advance. Quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. Half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. And, and yes, it has also been said Oh, actually, let me get my mic back here. Sorry about that. Okay, if there were more audio problems, that was because my mic was placed badly. I hope that helps. Hmm. Salt activates your ingredients. Whip it. Whip it good. Correct it. Whip. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, that was how much of that? Oh, yeah, that was half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. And yeah, this is where I get on the naughty list because yes, I have yet to grind my own nutmeg. And yes, I, I have heard it is much better than uh, this stuff. And I, and I do actually have a little microplane too. I just really need to get some uh, full nutmeg um, pods, which I should probably do this, uh, this uh, very soon, in fact, with the holidays coming. Now that we go here, now all I have to do is get out some Heavy cream and some milk. Here again is a consistency thing because this recipe calls for both cream and milk. So, go for one cup of cream. I use whipping cream because it's actually a little cheaper, yes. And I have not yet used a recipe that's been sensitive enough that you need to use heavy cream versus whipping cream. I was just slightly less than, than a cup, but not, there shouldn't be a problem. Now from here, we do a cup of milk. And I think it was just that much more with the cream. And that should be good. That's the other thing about pumpkin pie. This is actually going to be a very interesting consistency. It's going to, consistency is going to be very liquid at first. Even when it comes out of the oven, it is uh, when it's finished baking, it's, it's not completely finished baking. It will still be a very liquidy type of uh, crust. It will need to take a couple of hours to set. And actually, at this point, I do have to say, we are almost done here. Um, finally, some vanilla extract. And while we're doing this, uh, video again, salt activates your ingredients. Uh, have we locked up again, folks? Somebody mentioned video. Uh, looks okay on this end. And we're talking about a cup, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract here. I don't even mind just eyeballing it. And now at last, I'm just going to beat the eggs. Okay. And there we go. Now all we have to do is stir until this is all very smooth and, as it says, soupy. It is going to be very runny. It is not going to be a thick batter. And I can say that from experience. I have made this a few times, which is why I'm not worried um, that, again, it's going to be very, very liquid. Boy, this is interesting, actually. I'm interesting the way this is mixing together. Of course, since that is a pretty thick puree, that should help as well. However, it does look like the puree is mixing in rather well. Yay for that ninja. Look at that. It looks like it is working. It 
since this is homemade and not the canned stuff, I do have to be care be sure that I properly separate that uh, pumpkin puree. But that it does look like it is actually turning into a uh, real pumpkin pie batter. And as I said, we are actually almost done at this point because all we will need to do is uh, put it into the crust and bake it. So we will, the pie will get baked and we will get baked. <clears throat> no, you didn't hear that. <laughs> um, yeah, the eagle gives us a hundred, a grade of 100. Well, thank you very much. Here's where I guess, just have some patience here because it's not quite blended in yet, although it's doing pretty good. <laughs> As I mentioned, this Amish butter print here um, dates to, what did I say? Something like late 50s, early 60s, I think it was. So yeah, I'm very glad to be able to keep using this and I dread the day, if ever, that this thing breaks. I hope it never does, of course, but I do my best to be careful with this, <laughs> especially now that I have little kids, you know, four-footed furry kids. I really have to be careful with fragile things like this. And it's actually... All right, got to really mix it all in because it's still solid on the bottom here. Get out. Let's get this out. Oh, this isn't as bad as I feared. There isn't too much. There's still a few lumps, so just got to keep whisking it. Anyway, as I said, we are. This is uh, <laughs> pumpkin pie season, and. Well, the re again, the reason why I'm doing this is I'm hoping it provides at least a couple of tips for anyone who wants to uh, try making a uh, pumpkin pie their very own. Whether you have made a hundred pies or whether this is your first pie, I am hoping I've set a, uh, at least something that you may uh, find interesting. Like the fact that, as I mentioned, eh, it's still a little solid, unfortunately. As I mentioned, when I first started doing this, I did include the pumpkin skin. I actually pureed it and uh, put the pumpkin skin in it, but people did not like the consistency of it. They thought there were little pieces of shredded carrot in the pie, and because of this, I had to take it out. Nonetheless, Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to use a blender for this part here as well. Maybe I might do that because fortunately I do have a larger one. And this won't take long anyway. So, thanks mom. Uh, as I think I mentioned, this was her ninja that I was proud, lucky enough to uh, inherit my brothers and I did not fight at all as we were um, dividing up her possessions, which was very nice. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking this is the right thing, giving it an extra blending here, because once this is done, it will be ready and plop. Yeah, a couple of stringy bits. In fact, I think I'll just leave these bits out. <laughs> Which means, get this out of the way. Where did I put that? Uh, you're again for your patience, folks. Okay, here's the ninja. Yeah, yeah, you too. Where did I put the cover to that? Oh, okay. I put it here, in fact. Okay, good. Is this, no, that's not even the right cover. What am I doing wrong here? Oh. Sorry. This is taking so long. Ah, uh, hell. I really hope I didn't make a mistake. 
And that I seem to have this, but I do not have the actual, seems odd. I may have made a mistake. Oh well. Well then, we're gonna have to do something really foolish. Uh, how am I gonna do this now when I can't seem to find the right cover? I'm looking one last time and I'm not seeing it. All right. If I do this the wrong way, it is going to splash all over the place, right? So I don't, yeah, this is, this is not going to work. Okay. Well then in that case, sorry, I'm not going to do one of those fail videos. You know, the one where I get, where I splash this all over the place. Rather, I guess we'll just have to keep doing it the hard way. Where did I just put that whisk? Ugh. Uh, no, that's okay. I'm just sorry if I'm, things seem to be falling apart here. It's my own right, fault. Here we are. My problem is, is that she I only found... Okay. Use a ladle and scoop it in. No, this will have to do. You know what I mean? Like, when you go to pour it in, you use a ladle. I could do that. That way it doesn't splash everywhere. We'll put it into the smaller one, little by little. Anyway. Just ladle it into the, into the pie crust. Yeah, I could do that, but what I'm trying to do is just simply break up the uh, big bits. There aren't too many big bits in it, though. Oh, there. Yeah, if you look at it, you see, you see what I mean? Yeah. You see, it still has big bits. Mm -hmm. So, sorry for that difficulty. Well, while we're waiting, yeah, don't do it. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm this a lot more. That's why. Okay. Yeah, so, I'm just having to carry a lot more. I know what to do then. Put it and feed it more. All right. Let me get the other. It tastes more. really good. Mm. I knew mm. I had a medium sized one. I just use a small medium because I don't I don't have the right cover for it. Unfortunately, I thought I did. One of these, isn't it? Unfortunately, I I did look and it does not seem to be there. So I don't know why. I don't know where. Yes. Yes, but how does the uh, mixer go in? Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's the problem. All right. So, okay, well then, we'll just do it this way as quickly as we can. And this is what we get for going live. <laughs> and that we cannot edit these things out. So, yes. Oh, you found it. It was right there on the floor. It was it right there. One. It was on the other one. She found it. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank, thank you very much. That's why I'm here. Yes. I sit in the other room. I don't like being on camera, so I don't go on camera. That, that's okay. But I sit in the other room, and I listen. Mm-hmm. And I, that's why I bounce in every occasionally. Yes, thank you very, very much. Not I knew I had it, and of course it was right there in front of me, wasn't it? Do you want some more pumping or just? No. no, this no, this is enough. Okay. So now we get to do it this way. Thank hold you very much. I hold the mic back from it. Yeah, good idea. Let me let me yeah. put the mic away. Yeah, like about here or so. Okay. Finally, just come on. Oh yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, just do it. Says the comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just came here to read the comments. <laughs> okay, now at last, here we go. And you know what? I forgot to put the blade in it. <laughs> We're going to look at this as a comedy. Oh, definitely. Def tragedy. Oh, definitely. Definitely. No. Tragedy would have been if I tried mixing it without this cover. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the live. Mm-hmm. There's blade in the bottom. I thought I felt something in the bottom of it. Okay. There's something still in the bottom of that. Yes, there is. But, oh man, what am I doing wrong this time? Is it a different blade you need? I hope not. Okay. All right. Take, take a breath. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm not panicking. You're not going to trip. Here, you're scratching the side. Yes, I am. Wait, wait. Let me help. Oh, okay. Here. All right, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Hi, we watched a cast iron video where he spent half an hour fooling around with a food processor. <laughs> I was just saying, you got to put a blade in it. Yeah, there is that. <laughs> Hold on a second. For about the 20th time, folks, thank you for your patience. <laughs> well, of course, you know, nobody has to can stay. Can the other one just so I can see how it goes on the bottom? Other one. Other, the other. I think we still have a blading on the bottom of this. I think that's what the issue is. Okay. Um, oh, the other one of these. Wait a second. Doesn't it go? It doesn't need to go in. The, it goes in this. What are you? You're silly. You're very, very silly. What am I doing? Put the cap on. Okay. That's an old blender. Old blender is just blender from the bottom. This is a ninja. Yes. It doesn't go like this, and then you put this on it. Um, oh, no, it does have to be stable, though. Yeah, if you look at the other one, you see there's something on the bottom there. Just a little nub. Yeah, I have to just open this long enough. <laughs> well, as I said, no, but yeah. <laughs> I just can't seem to get it on that little nubbin. No, I no, neither can I. That was the trouble. You know what? Maybe I should pour it into the bowl, put put the thing in, and then put it back. <laughs> I just had it. Yeah, maybe that would work better. Okay. <laughs> Here. One, one, one. Yeah, I know. Well. Here, just because I'm already here. Okay. Thank you so much. This is off camera, unfortunately, but there okay. there, it was on it. I knew it. It just, it, it is feels on? like, it feels like it's not stable and it is. Okay. Yeah. Before we put it the thing floats, on, though. yeah, That's before we put the thing on, maybe, oh, there's a, actually, maybe there's another blade. Look at, look at these yeah, blades. This isn't long enough here. Look at the, okay. There are more blades. These aren't, this isn't long enough either. Okay. Does one fit on the other? No, like these aren't. They're not big enough? No, they're not. All right. So it's not going to work that way. Yeah, because look at this isn't this isn't going to be long enough to reach. Okay. Um, yeah, because you're not going to get Hold on. Yeah, I know. And I, I don't see any other missing parts, unfortunately. No, there's got to be. <laughs> All right. Maybe this. Boy, after all this, <laughs> it's better be a good pie. Yeah, because this one, I can't. This doesn't click on it at all. See, this is what happens when you inherit stuff. Yeah, pretty much. You don't know how it works. No, you're right. It probably is missing another part. Okay, you know it? what? Use the smaller one and watch. I know what we can do. Problem solving. Problem solving is best. Where's the piece problem? by piece? No, yeah, get that right there. Okay. Where's, the, where's the mixture? Right here. No, oh, the mixture. Right there. Okay. Ladle. Ladle. Or a slotted spoon. Yeah. Or a slotted spoon. Yep. Okay. Right here. And on top of all this, I've got a mess to clean up. But again, yeah, that's my own fault. Grab the small one. Okay. What are we doing? What? No, put the, the big one out. Okay. Got it. I'm going to pour one this. Out? Yes. Okay. Oh. Uh. <laughs> um what you're gonna be able to add it all together okay. and stir it and... I need a better all right I need a better slot spoon right here Anything I can do. Hold um, it for it. This is not easy. All right. No, I was not anticipating this. I can only, again, thank you for your help. It's not a problem. Not a problem at all. But anyway, we've come this far, or I've come this far. I mean, you don't have to, but. My problem is the ball, the ball is super heavy. Got it. You know I got I mean? it. But I don't know how to get you to be able to turn it at the right. All right. There we go. I could just need, yeah. Okay. Um, 
I'm slowly tipping it. Is that what you want? Yep. Oh, you're having breach over here. All right. Suffice to say, I did not expect this. Well, you didn't blend it enough. You didn't puree it nearly enough. Yeah, I guess not. Nope. Oh well. Will that fit? That'll fit. That'll, the rest of that should fit in there. In there? It okay. should. Okay. We'll pull out the big pieces that we can right, breach then. it with. Okay. This is everywhere. All right. Yeah, I know. Well, it's my mess. I will clean it up. Well, I kind of made more of a mess than you did. <laughs> No, you didn't. There I we go. A, I made a bigger mess. There we go. So that fits. Yeah. So and that, that's really all you have to worry about puring because the rest is is good. Okay. You know. All right. Oh, <laughs> sorry, folks. Yeah. Oh, you didn't see what we were doing. No, we kind of uh, sort. Of, yeah, we kind of split it up between the um, yeah, between the actual liquid and the solid. Yeah. The thing. The 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 blade. The blade mm -hmm. here. The blade. You're going to put the blade in. Yeah. The, the blade, blade. The blade. The blade. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Relax. Take it I back. know. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm nice. okay. I'm okay. okay. I'm, no, the wrong one. Wrong one. That really fits the length? Yes, it does. Oh, wow. Hmm. There you go. There we go. <laughs> hmm. I wonder where the long blade, longer blade didn't. Maybe you know what we're seeing? We're seeing. There's probably an extension. If you there we go. It. You know what we're seeing? We're seeing one of those reality shows, only in this case, you know, they're not editing out the boring bits. Good thing we're not on, like, one of those, uh, like, if you said 10 seconds left. Oh, yeah, know, no, like, no, believe me, we would be, yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay, okay. at last, but, um... <laughs> took all that just to get to this. Okay, everybody, I want you to post Gordon Ramsay memes just to show, just to uh, make fun of this. Mm -hmm. I deserve it. I think that's very good. Hmm. Think we're good? Mm -hmm. Now, do you want to do the other part? Because I know there's still some left in there. Okay, we, we'll have to do that. And just pour that out. Back into the bowl. Mm -hmm. That's what we should have just done, is just start bringing out the two. Yes, you're Instead right. Instead of sitting there straining it. That probably would have we're been the better straining. idea. Like we just did the harder thing. Yeah. Well, of course we do it Hold the, the hard way. Hold oh, the blade. You, oh, yes, the blade. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But you were right about the puree. It's much better now. Mm -hmm. And now we just pour in the rest of the other one here. In fact, let me move this over this way. I should have. I was completely off camera with that. However, it's a much better puree now. Want to hand me another one? Okay. Pour it in here? Here's the rest of it. Thank you, you very much. Can we this off camera? Okay. Do you want me to? Um, so I carry this off camera? No, that's all right. Uh, well, here, right. Okay. Oh, by the way, whoever is trying to insult the channel, uh, your messages are being held for review. So, sorry about that. Hmm. Someone's insulting the channel? Yeah, some troll. No big deal. Why do people do that? Because... Like, we already deal with so much in this world, day to day. You know what I mean? We're just, you know, trying to do something that is enjoyable to us and gives other people joy. Yeah. I don't understand why people, it, well, you know, I, I don't want people that, you don't know what goes on in their daily lives. And unfortunately, people do seek, get pleasure out of doing that yeah. kind of stuff. He gets attention. That's more than anything. Yeah. But it's just the, like the words that I said last week. You know, we all just got to work on being kinder. Yeah, don't worry. All right. I'm just using that as a platform. Oh, yes. And part two. And then, hey, guess what? You know, this is, we are just about done because after this, all we have to do is pour it into the pie crust. <laughs> so I understand there's an actual editor on this YouTube thing so that I'll be able to edit out like about the last 30 minutes of this. <laughs> wow, 
wow, it took all of that just to get to this. <laughs> you know, uh, 20 minutes of uh, fussing around with your help, thank you very much, oh, and about 10 seconds of actual <laughs> pureeing. <laughs> oh, well. We have 78 people still watching, though, mm -hmm. and thank all 78 yeah. of you. Yeah. This, here's one for Gordon Ramsay. This pumpkin is so yeah. raw, Love. Linus Van Pelt showed up. Thank you very much. Mm. I am surprised that people stuck around, and thank you very much for doing that. Because at long last... No. Give it a little whisk. There All we right. go. There you go. Give it a little bit of a whisk. Yeah. At long, long last, there is our pumpkin pie mix. And it, again, it is supposed to be this liquid and soupy. This is actually right. It just should not have taken this long to get this way, and it, that, of course, is my own fault. <laughs> All right, now, if you don't mind, I have one last thing, and that's I need to wipe up a little bit of this mess here. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's, 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 yeah, that's, my, that's my own fault. Well, I definitely helped with that. <laughs> no, you didn't. I told you, I made the biggest mess. Yeah. Yeah, right? So long, long last. We'll turn out to pay up cats like pumpkin. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> okay, finally, let's bring back to, you remember this was about cast iron, remember that? This thing's cooled off to the point where I can hold it in my hand now. But hey, here is our pie crust, finally. In a Griswold number 10. All right. So if you, if folks will just pretend the last half hour never existed, which of course that will never happen. <laughs> All we do now, put in our pie pilling. And this is exactly what it is supposed to look like. Because now at last, Really, the rest of it will be yeah, really close over there. Oh, yes. No, I, re I recognize that. Mm -hmm. However, th that's the whole point is that it is going to uh, become, it's going to bake in the oven. And mm -hmm. even when it comes out of the oven, it is still going to look, thank you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's still going to look like liquid. All right. Okay. One more thing. I've got to take care of this poetry power person, whoever he was. Okay, remove, put, put user, bye-bye. Okay, he's gone. So, yes, I'm sorry, I'm a, control, I'm a Nazi control freak. This channel does not observe free speech. No, it doesn't. So, so live with it. <laughs> At long, long last, thank you, everybody, for your patience with this. We get to put this in the oven. Power the press. Oh, yes. All right. And now, at last, this will be our last step, which is, of course, to put it in the oven. Now, I've gone this far. I think I will say what we're going to do before we end this. And that is, you bake for 15 minutes at 425 degrees, and then you lower the temperature to 350 for 40 minutes. After that, you take it out of the oven and it and let it cool for at least two hours so that it will solidify. So yeah, no, I'm I'm not going to keep you here for all this time. I mean, thank you very much for your patience with every, with all of this, folks. Yeah, see if people heard the last part. Mm -hmm. that. I don't know if they did. Okay. All right. Having done all that, at long last, into the oven we go. And that's really about it. I didn't know you switched the camera. Okay. <laughs> this camera's at the angle. There we go. Do this nice and quick, but carefully. I mean, after all this, I do not want to spill this all over the oven. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much for taking care of the cat. Okay. And at last. Boom. Our pie goes into the oven at last. Maybe we'll have to that was her. So, you have been showing her off. That's true. Yeah, I think I'll end, I think I'll be able to end this the way it began, which is like this. Don't worry. There you go. All right. 
And this is what everybody gets for waiting all this time, folks. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Goodbye. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for your patience with all of this, folks. But nonetheless, I still enjoyed myself. I really hope you did. I mean, yeah. She's yeah. so cute. Oh, man. She's, she's adorable. Just a little... She's also so soft, too. Yeah. I mean, really. You can't believe how how soft and fluffy she is. She's like a rabbit. She's like <laughs> rabbit's fur. <laughs> And mm. she is enjoying this, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, both of the cats are doing much better now. Very happy about yeah, that. five days of just, just being so worried about them. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah. She says, hi. I don't want to be held anymore. I'm done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, I very much apologize for all those mishaps there, but at least nonetheless... We've got ourselves a pumpkin pie. <laughs> and as I said, my whole point, of course, is we did get to see some cast iron tonight. So thank you very much again. And I hope, despite my difficulties, I'm hoping at least this did uh, provide at least a few um, couple of tips on what uh, we might do and what we might not want to do <laughs> to make a pumpkin pie. Because a uh, week from tomorrow, it's Thanksgiving. Did you start the timer? Um, yeah. Did not start the timer, but I know it's been about uh, three minutes. So, and with that, actually, especially since we are getting on here, I can only thank everybody for your patience and thank you once again for watching. Next Wednesday, of course, is the night before Thanksgiving when everybody is going to be busy either traveling or preparing. Um, I'm thinking because of that, next um, next Wednesday's live chat, we'll probably just make it a chat. <laughs> Because there are, of course, a lot of things to talk about, especially in regards to cast iron. And we will see what happens then next week. But again, thank you very much uh, for watching, everyone, and for hanging on here. Anyway, I did enjoy myself, and I really hope you did as well. So all I can say now is, um, uh, I forgot, it's Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think it's a Walmart brand. I use it for turkey and chicken a lot. Oh, the ca yeah, the cast iron collection. <laughs> Um, yeah, the mishaps make it real. <laughs> the Walmart brand, for the record, is Ozark Trail. But nonetheless, uh, thank, thank you for everyone. And please feel free to post your comments, by the way. Uh, and yes, as I said, I, I agree that last half hour was something of a misadventure. I will not deny that. So please feel free to pour it on. <laughs> thank you for your patience, folks. And have a good evening. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that one.